God loves us. God can do this. Why hasn't God done this yet? See, God is making you spiritually fit to receive what he's already willing to do. Have you seen that footprints poem? How many people seen the footprints poem? You know the footprints thing, right? Where I was having this dream and I was talking to Jesus and, and, and I was looking back over my life like a walk on the beach and, and there was two, Jesus and I walking together and two sets of footprints and then I noticed that at the hardest time in my life there was only one set of footprints and I was like, come on, Lord. I mean. At the hardest times, you're not there for me? And then Jesus replies, no, my child, it was then I carried you. Now, I'm not down on that. I think that's good. I just have to say in my life, I've needed to be carried sometimes. I mean that sincerely. I've been through some very dark nights. I've been very open about my cancer and the tr trials that my children have been through and heartache in our church. And I'm the furthest thing from any success story. I can tell you that being a pastor for over 25 years has been the crucible of my sanctification. Amen, anybody? <laughs> Amen, right? I don't know what God's doing over the church, but he's sure doing a lot in me to keep me on the job. And So anyway, the footprints poem, I kind of get that, that sometimes you have to be carried. Everyone say sometimes. <laughs> That's why I'd like to encourage you to mount on your kitchen wall beside your footprints decoupage. <laughs> Maybe you could mount beside it this other poem that I found that I think is a good parallel. I'd like to read it to you. It's called Butt Prints in the Sand. Listen up. One night I had a wondrous dream. One set of footprints there was seen. The footprints of my precious Lord, but mine were not along the shore. But, th but then some stranger prints appeared. I asked the Lord, what have we here? <laughs> Those prints are large and round and neat. Lord, they're too big for my feet. My child, he said in somber tones, for miles I carried you alone. I challenged you to walk in faith, but you refused and made me wait. You disobeyed. You would not grow. The walk of faith you would not know. So I got tired. I got fed up. And there I dropped you on your butt. <laughs> because because in life there comes a time when one must fight and one must climb, when one must rise and take a stand or leave their butt prints in the sand. <laughs> you, you want a miracle? You want a miracle? You want a miracle? I want one for you. Miracles flow from what we have. Miracles flow through active faith. Now as you wait for your miracle, and there is waiting involved, isn't there? As you wait for your miracle, jot these five things down as you wait for your miracle. Number one, have you done everything? Have you done everything you know to do? And we have people in our church that are looking for jobs. They'll come up and say, Pastor, can you pray for me? I'll say, I will pray for you. How many applications did you fill out for employment this week? I tell our people that looking for a job is a full-time job. That's your job till you have a job. Not lowering your handicap, not improving your gardening, not sharpening your hobby. Your job is to find a job. And if you'll pour yourself into that, we'll pour ourselves into praying, and God will meet us right there. Have you done everything you're capable of? We're all grieved by people who think that it's spiritual, who have an illness, 
Uh, I appreciated what Jack said. We both went through prostate cancer at the same time. I also just had some blood test results, and I'm thankful to be cancer three for three years now as of Friday. All right? Now, did I pray? Did I pray, and did our church pray, and did people I'll never have the privilege of meeting pray for me and pray for God to heal me? Yes, they did. But I went to the doctor. <laughs> Job applications, doctor treatments. Some of you have prodigal children. I'm thankful to say that all of our three children are in Christ and following Christ and serving Christ, but each one of them struggled in their own way to come to their adult faith. And I know what it is to be up in the middle of the night and, and not just praying and not just kneeling and praying. I know what it is to see my tears falling on the carpet this far from my face, crying out to God. And I pray for your prodigal to come home. How much do you pray for your prodigal to come home? When have you grown hoarse in crying out to God for, that, for, that, for the enemy to be defeated and for the friends to turn against them and for the sin to become like gravel in their mouth and for them to come back to the Lord? You do what you can. Faith is active. So as you wait for your miracle, have you done everything you're capable of doing? Secondly, have you done everything you've been counseled to do? We all know as pastors the frustration of people who come and ask for advice with no intention of doing it. I believe so strongly if you go to a person in spiritual authority, as I have done, if I ever went to, and I have done it, if I ever went to Dr. Graham, who's been a real mentor to me, and I said to him, uh, uh, Jack, uh, what should I do about this? I'll, I'll tell you before his mouth opens, I'm going to do what he says. And if you're looking for input about your church, about your ministry, about your family, about your health, while you wait on God to do a miracle, take the counsel you've received and put it into practice. Thirdly, have you removed all impediments to prayer? Isaiah 59 says that our sins have separated between us and God. His iniquities hide his face from us so he won't hear. We pray for one thing, but we have unconfessed sin in other areas of our life. Psalm 66, 18 says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. That's not a hard verse to interpret. And sometimes we don't pray because we know that we'd have to deal with our unforgiveness or bitterness or resentment or jealousy or envy or covetousness or whatever it is. God answers prayer of the pure heart, the sincere heart, the cleansed heart. Have you removed all impediments to prayer? Are you praying in faith expectancy? Matthew 21, 22 says, whatever you ask in faith, believe that you have received it and it will be done for you. Are you conducting yourself as you wait for your miracle like a person who has already received it? I'm not anxious. I'm not stressed. I'm not pacing back and forth. I gave that burden to God in prayer, and I believe that I have received the petitions that I have asked from Him, and it's just a matter of time now. It's just pages on the calendar. My kids are going to come home. God's going to restore my health according to His will. God's going to answer these prayers for financial needs. God's going to unify our church. God's going to turn this around. I, whatever you ask in faith, believe that you have received it and it will be done for you. And lastly, to the rest of the passage, are you pr praying with God's glory as your motive? That's the third thing. When I need a miracle, miracles flow from what we have. Miracles flow through active faith. Miracles flow to the glory of Jesus. Miracles flow, do you get it? They're for a reason. They're for a reason. Notice at the end of verse 9, they tasted the water, now become wine, and they did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. The master of the feast called the bridegroom and said to him, everyone serves the good wine first when the people have drunk freely, then the poor wine. Okay, that's just stunning that that's in the Bible. <laughs> just stunning. So what he's saying is that everyone puts out the good wine first, and then when people are half in the bag, then they put out the bad stuff. 
but you have kept the good wine until now because what God does is awesome. How, how many people not surprised that what Jesus made into wine was kind of rocking their little taste-a-thon, <laughs> right? And, and uh, you've kept the good wine until now. Here's the part I wanted to get to. This is the first of his signs Jesus did at Cana in Galilee and manifested his, what's it say? Look at the verse, verse 11. This is his first miracle in Cana of Galilee, fill in the blank, and he manifested his, say it. Say it again. He manifested his. That should be your favorite word. Say it again. Lift up your voice last time. Shout it. He, he manifested his glory. That's the purpose of the universe, okay? This is not uh, some miracle to keep the guests hydrated, okay? This is not some keep the party going miracle. This is a glory miracle, and all miracles are for God's glory. And while we wait for uh, the miracle to happen, this is why some of you came to this session, this part right here. You've been wondering, God loves us. God can do this. Why hasn't God done this yet? See, God is making you spiritually fit to receive what he's already willing to do. God's working in your heart a readiness. God's working in your heart a readiness to optimize the miracle for his greater glory. And when it comes, you will be in the best possible position to testify to his greatness, to join the chorus of the created order that is shouting every moment the glory of the God who spoke and the worlds were formed. All right? And that's our great God. And miracles are for God's glory, not for my convenience. Not so I can have a better night's sleep because I'm not worried about what my son's doing. Not so I can, uh, uh, you know, get over my anxiety over the situation at the church. God wants to display himself. The eyes of the Lord are running to and fro throughout the whole earth, searching for those on whose behalf he can show himself strong. He can show himself strong. He can show himself strong. And God is looking for people who have gotten to the place through spiritual readying to give him all of the honor and glory for what he's already willing to do. Miracles flow to the glory of Jesus. May it be so. I would have despaired unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Oh, not someday, not just from heaven, but right here on earth. Front row seat to see how our sovereign God is using this circumstance for my good and for his glory. So many simple things bring us joy. But is it possible we're missing out on a greater joy? The joy of building and sharing your faith? We've prepared a collection of practical resources to light your faith fire and experience the joy of walking in faith and then sharing that faith with others. Get a copy of a brand new book by Pastor James McDonald called Build Your Faith. It's filled with biblical, joy-inducing truth. In Build Your Faith, you're going to discover what faith is and what it isn't. How to have faith when you're waiting on God how and why faith pleases God, and the good results that faith brings about in your life. Build Your Faith can be mailed to you today as our thanks for supporting this ministry. And to help you share your faith, we'd like to send you an entire new collection of faith building and equipping resources. For your gift of $110, we'll send you the New Life Collection, which includes a series of messages that walk through the entire gospel message so that you can share your faith with confidence. Also included is the Share Your Faith CD, where Pastor James shares practical wisdom that you can use to identify those in your life with hearts that may be ready to hear the gospel. And by ordering today, we'll include a beautiful 5 by 7 art print to remind you to share your joy in Christ with others. There really is no greater joy than seeing God use your life to get 
the message that changed you to someone else. Build your faith and share your faith. We can't wait to hear from you. Just call 800-545-6800 or go online to jamesmcdonald.tv to request your resources now. And finally this, miracles flow for, you're like, is there anything in, me, in this for, for me? Just this, miracles flow for a deeper faith. This is the first of his signs Jesus did at Cana in Galilee, verse 11, and manifested his glory, there it is, and his disciples believed in him, believed in him. The result of the miracle at the wedding was a greater faith foundation for the disciples that not too far down the road were going to rock the world. Lessons in faith, lessons in God can be trusted, lessons in His promises are true, lessons in He's always faithful, lessons in He's always good. A verse that has sustained me that I'm prompted to share from Psalm 37, verse 13. It's my testimony. I would have despaired unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Oh, not someday, not just from heaven, but right here on earth. Front row seat to see how our sovereign God is using this circumstance for my good and for His glory. And so as we draw this session to an end, and it would be fine with me if it was just one person. But I want to invite you to bow your head for a moment all across this uh, great room, which seems so large to us and is such a teeny speck in the corner of the universe of our great God, yet He knows each one of us. He knows every detail about your life. He loves you with an everlasting love, and whether you see it or feel it or not this moment does not change the reality that His eyes are upon you. You are never out of His thoughts. If you are one of His sons and daughters through faith in Christ, He is working for your good. You say, well, James, I haven't been seeing it. Things aren't so great with us. We're hurting. Maybe in your marriage, maybe with one of your children or in your finances. You can't preach a miraculous God if you're not experiencing it. We all know the pain of standing up to preach when our hearts are heavy. Maybe you truly are at the place in your life right now, I've only been there three or four times. I don't mean can you think of things to pray about. I mean, James, this content is where we are at. We need a miracle. I mean, we need it. I don't mean it would be nice. I mean, I can't see a life beyond what we're now facing. God has to come through. God has to show up. God has to do something for us that we cannot do for ourselves. And if in the words that I'm trying my best to frame, you sense the Spirit of God stirring within you, that's me. He's talking about my life. That's my situation. God must have something for me. If it's you, I'd like to pray for you. I'm not going to have anyone come forward, but I would invite you by faith to activate something. If it's you, if it's only you, I'd like to invite you to just stand where you are. Just stand up and say, I need the miracle. I need the miracle. We've seen God do awesome things in our life and in our family. Every one of our children has a miraculous story to tell. Every leader in our church has been through a deep valley of suffering and seen sovereign, miracle-working God take us out the other side. And I believe that God would do a miracle in your life. Anyone else? Now I just want to encourage those who 
are not at that place now and are not standing, but have been at that place at some time, you know what that's like. I'm going to begin to pray now by faith. And if you are in agreement with me as we pray for these that are standing, I want to just encourage you to reach out your hand and put it upon their shoulder. Or if you can't reach them, just reach toward them. We're not wasting our time here. We serve a God who said, call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you have not known. And Father, we come before you now in the strong name of your Son, Jesus Christ. We come not as though we deserve to come. We come as those who have a righteousness which is not our own, but that which is found through faith in Jesus. We come wrapped in the robe of his righteousness, and you have told us to come boldly before the throne of grace to find help in our time of need. And we're coming right now. And we ask you, O oh God, to be at work in the lives of these people who have stood by faith and said, I need it, God. I have to see it, God. I don't know when it's coming, but I know I can't do it. Thank you, God, for their humility. You say in your word that you give grace to the humble. And here they are standing as others can see them. And here they are acknowledging that their resources are not sufficient for the burdens that they carry and for the trials that they face. Oh God, would you give wisdom to the person who needs it, who can't see a way forward, who doesn't know what to do next, who has no idea of where to turn. Oh Lord, where else can we turn? We turn to you, and we pray that you would give them wisdom. I pray for those who are hurting uh, for their children. You say in your word, I will bring your sons and daughters from afar, even from the ends of the earth. You know where they are, God. This is the last place on earth that they would want to be. But you can change their hearts, God. And we pray that you would turn them from their sin and turn them back to their family and to their Father in heaven. We pray that you would become for them all that their hearts are looking for and longing for. And we pray, oh God, that you would stir fresh love and compassion in our hearts for them. Because while it is so clear to us what they must do, it is not clear to them. And the God of this age has blinded their eyes. And we pray, oh God, that you would open their eyes to the glorious light of the gospel of your great son, Jesus, whom we love, whom we love to serve. I pray for someone who has sickness in their body, God. I pray that you would touch them. If you believe that God could touch someone and heal someone, say amen. amen. God, touch them. Do it for your glory, God. We don't want a longer life so we can spend more time at the beach. We want more days to bring you glory. We want more days to declare the sufficiency of your awesome son. We want more days to proclaim the unsearchable riches of your word. So give us days and grant us health that we might bring you glory and shine the light of who you are in this dark world. I pray for those, God, here who are hurting in their churches. There's division. There's strife. Give us extra grace, God. According to the incredible grace that's been showered upon us, make us men and women of forgiveness. Make us women of inexhaustible grace. Give us a capacity to love that is not our own. Heal the hurts that keep us from embracing those that have wounded us and drive us back to them again, God, in humility, shepherding the stubborn sheep and loving them the way that you would, God. Give us fresh mercy and grace here this week to do that. Now, Lord, I want to pray for the one who's carrying a burden that I can't think to speak of. You tell us that your spirit prays for us when we don't know what to pray. And I pray that your spirit now would bring those burdens before you as perfectly as only you can Awesome God, three in one. The mystery is great, but we love you and we worship you and our eyes are upon you. And we want to say, God, that you've been faithful to us. Your faithfulness dwarfs 
our unfaithfulness. You have given more by far than we have given. Forgive us for thinking that somehow we have done the greater work. We have done little. You have done much. Great is your faithfulness. You have never left us, not for a moment. You have always been with us, always faithful. Well, that was the end of the message, When I Need a Miracle, part of our month-long series on faith at Walk in the Word TV. Dad, do you have a word on faith to close us out today? I do. You know, so often we focus upon things that we're going to say, the yeah. promises we're going to claim, the truth that we're going to rest in. But I actually want to challenge uh, those who are with us today about something that they can stop saying. Huh. I want to challenge you to stop saying that God isn't working. Don't say he's not providing. Don't say I don't have what I need. Stop saying that and start saying, God's building my faith. See, God's already willing to do what it is you're asking him to do, but he delays, as I often say, to make us spiritually fit to receive it. So don't say anymore that God's not doing anything. Today he's building your faith and getting you to the place where you won't be ruined by the miracle, but you'll actually be made by it. He's making you right now. He's making your faith. Experience the joy of walking in faith and then sharing that faith with others. Get a copy of a brand new book by Pastor James McDonald called Build Your Faith. You're going to discover what faith is and what it isn't. How to have faith when you're waiting on God how and why faith pleases God, and the good results that faith brings about in your life. Just call 800-545-6800 or go online to jamesmcdonald.tv. The Word of God, yeah. believing it, acting upon it, no matter how you feel, and the good results are coming your way. That's what we believe, that's what we're seeing, and you can see it too. Amen, and the, the how you feel part is the hardest part, right? And yeah, that's why we say stay in the scriptures every time, because it doesn't matter how you feel, but stay in the scriptures. Amen, Just keep believing it, keep acting upon it, God's gonna do some awesome things. This program was paid for by the friends and partners of Walk in the Word.